God bless you and good morning in the mighty and precious name of Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but I'm blessed and excited to be in the house of God. Come on, hold your finger up. Just say one more time. I said one more time. Uh, there used to be a song back in the day that said one more time. One more time. He allowed us to come together one more time. Amen. I don't know about you guys on this morning, but I'm blessed and excited. I'm Pastor Lucas right here with Rebirth Ministries, giving God praise with you guys, blessing his holy name on this morning. I'm just blessed and excited to be with you. I don't know about you. Look, I ain't gonna lie. <clears throat> A little tired in my body. Hallelujah. But I'm just blessed to be in the land of the living. Listen, we got a new feature available now. I can see your comments. Michelle, good morning to you. I can see who's on the broadcast with me this morning. Amen. As we are speaking to you live this morning, uh, hallelujah, we're right here at the house uh, in the comfort. Thank God we are not out in the snow, all .25 inches of it. Amen. We're out here and we're, we're in the house, amen, giving God the praise. Sister Kiki, good morning, amen. God blessing you and your family. As you come on, just say good morning on this morning. We want to be a blessing to you. We want to do all that we can with you and for you. We're so glad to be with you guys on this morning in another broadcast. Come on, let's give God some praise. Let's give God some glory. Come on, Sister Keita, God bless you for getting on the broadcast. Amen. We thank God for you guys on this morning being with us. Sister Ira in the house. Amen. We give God glory for you guys. Look, I don't know about you. But the scriptures in the song says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Look, I know you're in your own house. Sister Jessica, Sister Barbara, amen. I know you're at the house, but come on, make your house a sanctuary. Come on, make your house a church. Elder Scales in the house on this morning. Make your house a living sanctuary. Come on and get up, stretch, turn that phone up, turn that TV up. Amen. Sister Desiree, God bless you. Come on, make your house the sanctuary. Because <clears throat> we're going to go to God this morning. Sister Boo in the house. Amen. We're going to go to God this morning. And we're going to get after that praise. We're going to get after that worship. Look, I'm blessed. I am excited. For this is the day. Come on. That the Lord has made. I got to rejoice. I got to be glad in it. Amen. I thank God for you guys on this morning. You already know what I'm about to ask you to like and share this Black History Month. Amen. We're so blessed to be coming to you. Amen. Live and in full and living color. We're so glad, amen, that we can bring this gospel to you this morning. And I'm going to be speaking this morning in starting and continuing into our series about focus. Amen. About focus. You know you need to get your focus back. I said, you know, you need to get your focus back. There's so many things that are attending, that are contending for our focus, that wants our attention. It wants what we do, what we desire. It wants for us to do things other than what God desires. So this morning, we're going to identify what's taking your focus, what's taking my focus, what's distracting me. And I'm going to take you down through a couple of chapters in the Word of God that would help you and be a blessing to you in identifying those things that are prohibiting you, amen, from focusing on what God has for you to do, amen. Look, I'm going to send this one out to Sister Michelle, hallelujah, and Mother Francis. They said, this is my song. I want to change it up a little bit on this morning. Sister Leona, good to see you in the house of God this morning. We thank God for you. Come on, as you come in, I want you to say something so that I can acknowledge you. Hallelujah. I can see who's coming in live. Hallelujah. But this morning, we're going to change it up. I'm going to need y'all's help to help me praise him. I said, I'm going to need your help to help me praise him this morning. Come on, can you help me praise him? Sister Michelle, Mother Francis, this one goes out to you. Hallelujah. Come on and help me say, Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Yeah. Praise Him. Jesus. 
blessed Savior, oh, he's worthy to be praised. Come on and say it. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Oh, praise him. Jesus, blessed Savior.
will be this morning. Whatever you need, whatever you want, whatever you have need for, that's what it'll be this morning. That's what it'll be this morning. I don't have all day. I said, I don't have all day. So I'll call him one name that's above every name. I said, I don't have a morning. So I'll call him by the name that's given among men. Whereby, whereby we must be saved, yeah. What's his name today, church? I said, what's his name today, church? Can you call him? Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Blessed Savior. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Blessed Savior. Well, Jesus. Yeah. Blessed Savior, He's worthy to Jesus. Blessed Savior, He's worthy to be praised. I said He's worthy to be praised. <laughs> oh, it feels mighty good this morning. I said He's worthy. I said He's worthy to be praised. <laughs> I said he's worthy to be praised. I can remember being a child, walking into church, hearing the choir sing this song. And right now, I want you to just lift your hand. I want you to just lift your hands and just call on his name. Whatever you need him to be. I said whatever you need him to be. Whoever you need him to be. However you need him to move. Oh, that's what he'll do. That's what it will be this morning. I want you to lift your hands and call on the name of Jesus. Come on, even right there in your house. Ah, even right there on your job. Lift your hands and call on him. I heard my grandmother say, call on him. Call on his name, yeah. Call on his name, yeah. Hey, what's his name? worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Lord, touch your people on this morning. Give them strength, oh God. Lord, let this word be what they need. Let this word be the catalyst that would shift them forward. We give you praise and we say thank you, Lord, for what you're about to do in this message, for what you're about to do in their lives. Right now, I, I speak it over them. Let them claim it right now in the name of Jesus. Let them receive it right now in the name of Jesus. Whatever they need from you, God. Whatever they got to have from you, God. Whatever it is that they have need for, I speak it right now. That they receive it by calling on the name of Jesus. Hey. By calling on the name of Jesus. Oh, falling in love with Jesus. Oh, was the best thing I've ever Jesus was the best thing I've ever, ever, ever done. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> what a wonder you are. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Can we stay right there? <laughs> what a wonder you are. Oh, there's something about the name Jesus. Oh, my God. Well, uh, there's something about the name Jesus. I heard Bishop Rand say it like this. It is the sweetest name I know. Ah, yes, it is. Yes, it is. I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to leave that alone. I said I'm going to leave it alone this morning. Yeah, we're going to get into the word. We're going to get into the word. We're going to get into the word. Hallelujah. Mom, it's so good to see you on the broadcast this morning. Hallelujah. Sister Leona. 
Tila Celeste Harrison, God bless you for being with us on this morning. Brother Howard, God bless you for being here. Amen. Sister Brunette Brianna, amen. Brunette, God bless you. Sister Tish is with us this morning. Auntie Irvette is here. Leona is here. Brother Thomas, so good to see you. Wifey, so good to see you on with us this morning. We give God praise for each and every one of you guys. I don't know about you. But I love to call on the name of Jesus. Something happens when we call that name. When I call your name, hey, I said something has got to take place. Something's got to happen when I call on the name of Jesus. Whatever you need this morning, I'm praying, amen, hallelujah, that you can call on him and he'll answer, amen, that he'll be a friend. He'll do whatever you need him to do. We give God praise, amen, this morning for you being with us in the broadcast. We're so grateful and thankful, amen, that you are here this morning. Listen, I'm going to jump right into the word of God. I just, I could have kept singing and kept singing that because when I call on the name of Jesus, I just get excited and do it. Hallelujah. Just, I don't even think about what he's doing. I don't even think about what he's getting ready to do, but just for the things that he has done for me. I get happy. I get excited. Amen. And blessed on this morning. Listen, we're going to jump right into this. We've already had prayer. We thank you for being with us on this morning. I'm Pastor Lucas once again. Amen. If you're just now joining us, I told you that I can see you. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. LaVonda, Michelle, Holland, Johnson. I see you on here. Hey, cousin. Amen. We give God praise for you guys being with us. I'm Pastor Lucas, and we're getting ready to get right into the Word of God. We're getting ready to jump right in. Amen. And I want you to declare real quick, if you're on here, come on, type this in the comment section. Hallelujah. I'm getting my focus back. Yeah, I'm focusing this February. I'm getting my focus back. I've been living, amen, and having to stay in that house, having to do homeschool, having to do homework. Come on, say, I'm getting my focus back. Good morning, amen, uh, Mother Harrison, amen. Good to see you in the house on this morning. I'm getting my focus back. I need somebody to say that. I'm getting my focus back. I'm taking my focus back. But before we get focused in February for the things that God is going to do, for the areas that God is taking us into it's important amen that we learn and understand what's taking our focus come on one of the hardest things to do is to admit to someone that you have an issue or that you have a problem but guess what it's even harder sometimes to admit it to yourself come on can i get an amen in the house this morning sometimes it's even harder to admit to yourself that you've got some things on board that you've got some things going on amen that take your focus that you've got some issues come on you got some things in your life that don't nobody even know about you ain't told nobody about amen and it's hard sometimes to admit it to yourself that you got some problems come on saints amen they say that the first step to a 12-step program is it even admitting that you have a problem come on saints that's the first thing you've got to do i've already talked to you and told you that this month we're gonna take our focus back that this month, we're going to get our focus back. Hallelujah. We're going to talk to you a little bit further about it on today. But in order for us to get our focus back, in order for us to start focusing in February, hallelujah, guess what? We got to find out, firstly, what's distracting us. Come on, saints. I said we got to find out what's distracting us. There are things in our lives, amen, that are distracting unto us. There are things in our lives that want to take our focus. There are things in our lives that want to uh, take what it is that God is trying to do in our lives and amen, just kind of shift it a little bit. Amen. That we can't see what he's doing, that we can't pay attention to what he's doing. Amen. It wants to take our focus. Now listen, y'all bear with me right here. I did this on, on, on Wednesday night when I explained what I'm talking about when I say focus. You're watching me even now. You're looking at me even now. But there are things even in in your house come on saints uh, that are taking your focus hallelujah there are things in your life that are taking your focus you are supposed to be watching the word you are supposed to be listening to the message but guess what it's taking your 
focus. Come on, get your focus back. Yeah, I said that's what you need to do. You need to get your focus back. I defined it even on Wednesday night. I told you what focus was. It's to adjust one's eye or lens as to make something to a clear image. I can't stay there because I'll break that down a little further uh, on Wednesday night. To make it into a clear image. I can see it clearer now. I can see what God is about to do, but it seems to be a little bit blurry in my life. God, I need you to make it clear again. Somebody shout focus in your home. To direct towards a particular point or purpose. Some people in here in the broadcast this morning, you know that God has called you to something, but it seems as if you cannot focus on it. It seems as if you cannot uh, uh, dial into that particular thing you have no motivation anymore God has called you to it but God said I'm going to bring you into focus to fix or settle on one thing Uh huh. to concentrate amen I told you one of the messages in this series would be from Elder Scales bringing, saying, making the main thing the main thing hallelujah focusing on God I need you to ask yourself come on there are certain I'm going to just go over four things today that may be taking your focus just four can I give you those four amen Uh, the first thing would be distractions hallelujah I need somebody to shout distractions Uh I said distractions are dangerous yeah distractions are dangerous I was coming up the road last night and I I was trying to set the GPS or I was trying to look up something with the weather hallelujah and going up the road and and dad was in the driver's seat he said "Whoa, whoa whoa what you doing And that rumble strip hit on the side of the road. There was something that was distracting me. Y'all come on. As if the rain was not enough. uh, There was something that was distract. I said it was distracting me. Hallelujah. It was taking my focus. Uh, I have to be careful even with the graphics that I put up on the screen. Because some of all, guess what? It can be a little bit uh, 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 distracting. Come on, saints. Uh, I said it can be a little bit distracting. Look at this. Look at just a hot mess. Something is taking your focus. There are things that can come up, hallelujah, that can distract, hey, from what it is that God is doing. A distraction is something that takes your attention away from what you are supposed to be doing. Distractions, listen to this, comes from the Latin word dis, D-I-S, which means apart, and trahir, which means to drag. I'm going to say it again. Distraction comes from the Latin word uh, D-I-S, apart, and trahir, which means to drag. When it is that you are supposed to be focusing on God and the devil brings up a distraction, that means he's literally trying to drag you apart from God. I said, I'm going to read it again. Distraction comes from the Latin word dis, which means apart, and trahir, which means to drag. When God wants you to be focusing in the word and you start thinking about the spark plugs in the car, that's a distraction that the enemy is using to drag you apart from the presence of God. When it is that you're supposed to be doing the things of God, walking in the ways of God, and distractions come up, It's the enemy's way of dragging you apart from God, dragging you and pulling you out of his presence, dragging you and pulling him, pulling you out of the favor of God. But I need somebody this morning to say, I will not be drug away from God. I will not be distracted from God. What does the Bible say? I'll let nothing. Hey, separate me from the love of God. Those distractions, they might come, but you got to stay focused. Those things may pop up, but you got to keep your eyes on the prize, which is in the high calling of Jesus Christ. I won't be. Ah, distracted. I hear you in there, Michelle. Uh, I got one or two in the house this morning. Uh, I won't be distracted anymore. Uh-huh. I'm going to give you another one. Uh, surprises. Can I say surprises? Uh-huh. I said surprises come. Uh, somebody got a surprise this week. Uh, you got a surprise letter from the from the uh, 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 from the uh, 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 from the government. You got a surprise le- uh, uh, the letter from the hospital. Surprises come. Hallelujah. That they may take you 
you away from your focus. Uh, let me give you a definition and a breakdown of surprise. It is one of the five common English words that end in P R I. S E, uh huh. Uh, like the other four words, uprise, comprise, enterprise, and reprise. Uh, its final part comes from the French word prize, which means taken. Uh huh. I said it means taken. P R I S E means taken. Hallelujah. But the beginning of the word, listen to this. Uh, uh, the S U R in surprise, uh, hallelujah, comes from the French word means over or beyond. Uh, so if you you are surprised, that means you are literally overtaken, hallelujah, by something that you did not see coming. It literally means that something is taking you beyond where you anticipated being. Ah, I'm getting somewhere. I said this literally means that something is taking you, uh, uh, hallelujah, over and beyond where you intend it to be. Uh, can somebody say, I got a surprise this week. Uh, I got a surprise on my job last month. I got a surprise in the mail. I got a surprise in my doctor report. I got something that took me further than I wanted to go. Can I say this to you this morning? That's the same way sin is. Uh, hallelujah. It'll take you further than you want to go. I'm here to tell you this morning that when things come up, that's when things arise in your life that you do not expect, that carry you further than you anticipate going. Hallelujah. I want you to be confident. I want you to stand assured and say, I ain't surprised. I'm going to learn how to trust God. I'm not going to let this news take me further than I want to go. I'm not going to let let somebody's bad attitude take me further and beyond where I should be. I'm not surprised that the devil, amen, tried to come at me. I'm not surprised. Why? Because I'm a child of God. Because... Hey, I'm a child of the most high. Amen. And I will not be surprised. Well, I'm telling you about those surprises that come to take your focus. I'm even reminded of Job. You know the story. In Job chapter number one, beginning around verse number 13, the Bible said there was a party going on one day with his children. Amen. They were there. And the messenger came and said, look, the ox and the donkeys were feeding there in the field. And, and somebody they came in and they, they took them all away. Job looked up. Uh, hallelujah. said, indeed, they killed the servants. Uh, hallelujah. By the sword. But I escaped to tell you. Uh, Job stood there and I could hear him in the spirit saying, well, you know, I ain't surprised uh, because I'm blessed like that. I, I ain't surprised. But while uh, that servant was speaking, uh, another one came in verse number 16 uh, and said, the fire of God fell from down on the heaven and burned up the sheep." Uh, burn up the lambs and the servants uh, and consume them. I was the only one that escaped to tell you I can see Job say that's a little strange but guess what I, I, I'm not surprised well, while he was still speaking another one came up and said the Chaldeans formed an army and came together they took the camels hallelujah they killed the servants and I was the only one let me guess who escaped to tell me listen sometimes when bad news keeps on coming and it keeps on coming and it keeps on coming. You got to get it in your spirit. You got to get it in your mind to say, you know what? I ain't even surprised. I'm not going to get used to bad news, but I know that if I, my hand is in God's hand, then I'm going to expect trials. I'm going to expect tribulations. But at the end of the day, uh, it's going to be God that gets the glory. It's going to be God that gives me the victory. I said it's going to be God that gives the gets the glory, but he's going to give me the victory. He said even while he was speaking, uh, another one came and said your sons and daughters were eating uh, and having a party there. And a great wind came and it knocked the house in over them. And all of your children are dead, Job. Verse number 20, Job got up. Uh, he tore his robe, he shaved his head, and he fell to the ground and worshipped. And he said, naked I came from my mother's womb. 
uh, and naked I shall return. Uh, guess what? It ain't no surprise because the scripture said the Lord gave uh, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Uh, I need to speak to somebody this morning uh, that guess what? Even though things are coming up, the, even though issues are arising, even though the devil seem like he's raging on every side, I need you to say I will not uh, be dismayed. I will not get upset. I'm white anger, but I'm not going to sin. But God, I'm going to know that you in control. I'm going to know that you got the cattle on a thousand hill. Hallelujah. I'm going to know that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. I'm not surprised, God, but I'm going to give you glory. I'm going to stand on the word. I'm going to bless your name because I'm not surprised. I won't lose focus. I'm going to give God the praise. I'm going to give God the glory in the middle of the situation you got going on, in the middle of the circumstance. Don't act like you're surprised. Give God the praise. Ah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I said, I'm going to give God the praise. I'm going to give God the praise. I, I believe somebody ought to pause right here. <laughs> I said, I believe somebody ought to pause right here and give God the praise. Come on, come on, take a minute right here and say, even though I'm going through, ain't nobody looking at you down your row. Come on, even though I'm going through, I'm going to give God the praise right here. I'm not going to let a surprise bill shake me. I'm not going to let a surprise report shake me I will believe the report of the Lord I'm gonna hey I'm gonna give God some praise I ain't gonna get I ain't gonna I'm gonna surprise the devil and give God praise I said I'm gonna surprise the enemy where he expect to get me down I'm gonna flip the script and give God the praise hey I said, I'm going to give him some praise. I'm going to give him some praise. Come on, even while you're praising him, I'm going to go to the next thing. <laughs> I said, I'm going to go to the next thing. Uh, attractive things uh, can take your focus. Uh, now, I may not be that attractive to some of y'all, but it's all right. Uh, attractive things uh, can take your focus. What you mean, preacher? Things you like. It's okay. If that's what you like, it's all right. If that's what you like, attractive things. Hallelujah. Look, I was finishing up the message this morning. Uh -huh. and, and we had left the TV on from last night, you know, up and down in the middle of the night and, and restless, amen. But we had left the TV on. And when I got up, uh, uh, I think it's on VH1. If, if you go to VH1, guess what? There's a Martin Marathon on right now. Uh, Elder Scales, you on here? I can see. Amen. Me and Elder Scales, we used to work together, laid back on lunch watching Martin. We love to watch Martin. Amen. And, and the Martin was on this morning as I had to finish up my message. Uh, I said Martin was on as I had to finish up my message. And it won't the first season. I, I like the first season, but it ain't all that. Uh, amen. It was the middle season, season three and four and five. Amen. It was the middle, the good seasons. Uh -huh. uh, it was the good episodes. Uh, and guess what? It was the ones that I knew every word to. I said I knew every word. I knew what he was about to say next. Uh, see, well, back in the day when me and First Lady let the cable go, we had Martin on DVD. DVD. We watch every DVD, <laughs> uh, hallelujah, when we had Martin uh, uh, back in the day. And, and you know what? It was good because I like to watch Martin. I ain't gonna front. I, that's one of my favorite shows. I hear it's supposed to be coming back out. Hey, Amen. Uh, it's all good to do what you love. Hallelujah. And love what you do. I'm gonna say this. It's all good to do what you love and to love what you do. That's all good. It's all great to, to just do your own thing sometimes. But you cannot do it, amen, while you're supposed to be doing what God needs you to do. Y'all ain't gonna hear me. I said, it's fine for me to watch Martin, but I ain't got no business trying to watch that when I gotta get the word of God together for the people of God. I said, you gotta make sure that you ain't doing what you love to do when you're supposed to be doing what God has for you to do. Listen, 
there's a time and a place for everything. You got to make sure that you get your focus back. You can't just be at work all day doing what you want to do. You got to do what it takes to make your money. Come on, say, you got to focus. It's all right to have attractions, but sometimes that attraction can be a distraction. I, I, I'm going to say that again. This morning was an attractive distraction. I said it was an attractive distraction. It was something that was perfectly fine for me to do, but it was taking me away from my time with God. Y'all come on in here. Look, I'm going to say this and I'm going to just rumble off some down the list. Don't let your cell phone be an attractive distraction. Don't let a Facebook be an attractive distraction. Don't let the TV be an attractive distraction. Don't let your job and money be an attractive distraction. You got to put God first because if you seek God first and all of his righteousness everything else will be added hey unto you I, I, I gotta move I gotta move because I gotta spend a little time here listen listen I want to tell you the last thing that's a beautiful thing somebody shout beautiful thing in your house come on shout beautiful thing shall beautiful things let me say this real quick beauty is in the eye of the beholder I said beauty is in the eye of the beholder. I reminded of my mother-in-law. She said she was in the grocery store one day and she saw a lady that she knew and the lady had just had a baby. Yeah. And then and, and she had the baby covered up in the, in the basket. Amen. And she said, oh, you just, you just had your baby? She said, yeah, I just now had her. And she said, she said, let me see the baby. The lady pulled the blanket back and my mother-in-law looked at the baby and looked at her and said, oh, what a baby. <laughs> she said, what a baby. I don't think the baby was the pretty baby she said oh what a baby hallelujah I said beauty <laughs> is in the eye of the beholder and what may be beautiful to you oh my god I might not like it come on some of y'all might say lord that thing fine right there hallelujah what might be beautiful to you amen might not be beautiful to me somebody you know you ever heard somebody say I don't know what he see in her I don't know what she see in him listen we all might not be distracted by the same thing I'm going to say that again. I said we all might not get or might not be distracted by the same thing. So guess what? I can't put you down because you get distracted by, by cookies. Come on. I can't put you down because you get distracted, hallelujah, uh, uh, by, by Cheerios. I can't put you down. So don't put me down, hallelujah, because I get the itch when I start thinking about chicken wings. Don't, come on, say you cannot judge your neighbor for whatever it is that they get distracted by. Uh, what am I saying? I'm reminded even in the Bible uh, of a man that was so great he was a king. Uh, he was a military general. Hallelujah. He had his 10,000 victories while Saul had his 1,000 victories. Uh, he was a biblical strong man. He was a man after God's own heart. He was anointed before he was appointed. Uh, he was chosen even before he was to be king. He was searched out to be murdered but could not be found oh that's an intro i'm talking about king david ah, hallelujah i can't tell you of the next few bad things uh, without reminding you of his good things uh, but i read in second samuel chapter number 11 that in the spring in verse number one hallelujah at the time when he was supposed to be away at war Ah, oh, I'm, I'm going to teach you about, no, you didn't write honey buns on that screen. You know you ain't right. I've been doing good. I ain't had one in about, about four or five months, uh, four or five weeks. Four or five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Uh, uh, David uh, was supposed to be out at war. Uh, and David sent Joab uh, instead of himself. Uh, he sent him out with the king's men and the entire Israelite army. Oh, my God. You know, I read this scripture all my life. But listen to this. In 2 Samuel 11, I never heard this. Uh, and verse number one, in the spring, when he was supposed to be off at war, David sent Joab out with the king's men and the entire Israelite army. Listen to this. With the king's men and the entire Israelite army army. I've never heard this before. I've never considered this before. David sent out everybody that could stop him and keep him from getting distracted. 
I said, David sent out Joab and the king's men. I got to do some more study on this. And the whole Israelite army. In other words, those that were in the palace, uh, that were around him, that would watch him, his advisors that would say, no, you shouldn't do this. Hey, uh, no, you shouldn't do that. Hallelujah. Uh, no, I don't think that's right. He sent them all away. Listen to this. Sometimes God will put people in your life to keep you from getting distracted. Sometimes God will allow people to show up to keep you from going off the wrong path. Trust me from experience, I'm telling you the truth. Sometimes God will put people around you that will be a blessing to you to keep you from getting distracted. You got to know which is which. Do I have people in my circle that are helping me to get distracted or they're keeping me? I ain't got no amen from getting distracted. David sent away everybody that would check him. He sent away everybody, hallelujah, that would stop him. He sent them away. They destroyed the Ammonites and besieged Rabbah, but David remained in Jerusalem. Listen to this. Verse number two. I got three more verses. Hallelujah. In verse number two, what did the Bible say right here? What did it say? Here it is. One evening, David got up from his bed and he walked around the roof of the palace. Ah, listen to this. It wasn't until David elevated himself. Ah, Brother Thomas, I got an amen in here. I said it wasn't until uh, David was elevated, uh, until he went higher, uh, until God even raised him up, if you look at it that way. Hallelujah. He walked around the roof of the palace. Uh, hallelujah. He changed his perspective. Uh, he changed the way he could see things. Uh, he went to the roof, and from the roof, uh, he saw a woman bathing. My God. And this woman was very, very beautiful. I was talking to Bishop about it last night. Uh, uh, Sister Chis said amen. Sister Gail, I got some amens in the corner. I got an amen corner Sister Gail. Amen. Sister Tish. Hallelujah. Look, it, Bishop Lucas said last night, everything was alright uh, until she put a leg outside the tub. I said, Bishop, come on now. You didn't took it too far. You didn't took it too far. He said, David was fine uh, until she put a leg over the tub. I said, come on, Dad. Now, he said, she saw, he saw her bathing uh, and she was very, very beautiful. Beautiful. Listen to this. And David sent someone to find out about her. Oh my God. Hallelujah. He got distracted. Uh -huh. He lost his focus. You want to know why? It wasn't nothing wrong with him walking around his palace. It wasn't nothing wrong with him walking around, hallelujah, on, on, the, on, the, top of the, on the top floor at the penthouse. Hallelujah. It wasn't nothing wrong with him taking a stroll in his kingdom. But guess what? He lost his focus because he was out of position. He he lost his focus because he was out of place. He was walking around and he saw her bathing. They asked about her. He said, I got to know who she is. The man said, she is Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam and the wife of Uriah the Hittite. Isn't it something? He gave her her history and he gave her her current life. She is the wife of Uriah the Hittite. You know how the story went, but it did not matter because David had already lost his focus. Look at her name name as I was researching for this message this week, uh, I was reminded of her name, Bathsheba. Come on, somebody say Bathsheba. I ain't even look it up and see what it meant. Uh, but I said Bathsheba. Isn't it something that in her name is what she was doing? Uh, I said, isn't it amazing uh, that in her name, the first portion of her name is what distracted David's focus? Y'all better talk back to me. I said, in the first part of her name is Bath. <laughs> Hallelujah. What she was doing is what distracted David's focus. Uh, Bath, she bad. Y'all ain't talking. I said, David couldn't even talk right. She taking a bath and she bad. Bathsheba y'all better talk back to me he gave and said that she's the daughter of Eliam and the wife she's married David but then David sent messengers he said go get her 
Uh He said, go get her. She came to him and she slept with him, even being married to Uriah. Now she was purifying herself uh, for her monthly cycle. She had just come off of her monthly cycle, which ladies, you be honest, they say when you come off of that cycle, sometimes I think you're most fertile. Y'all talk back to me. When you come off of that cycle, she went back home. Listen to this. Uh, The woman conceived, uh, hallelujah, and sent words saying, I am pregnant. Y'all better talk back to me she got distracted by an attractive thing (laughs) he got distracted by hallelujah a beautiful thing you better be careful in what position you're in you better be careful in the beautiful things that come alluring to you you better be careful that you won't lose your focus you better be careful that you ain't looking at the wrong thing that's gonna lead to another thing that's gonna lead Y'all talk back to me. He was out of position firstly. Hallelujah. Because he was out of position. Hallelujah. He wound up seeing something that he never should have seen. Because he wound up seeing something that he never should have seen. He wound up doing something that he never should have did. He wound up having a child that he never should have had. He wound up killing a man that never should have died. Y'all better talk to me in here. Make sure that you don't lose your focus. I said you better make sure. That you try your best to keep your focus. I, I don't know who it's for. I don't know what 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 it's about. But I know that the Lord said you make sure the people get their focus back. Don't you come on, come on, come on back, come on back. Let, what do we used to say at work? Let me reel you back in. It's time to reel back in. We've got to get our focus back. Come on, saints. I said we've got to get our focus back. Come on, saints. We can do it. I said we can do it. I said we can do it with the help of the Lord. We can get our focus back. Somebody's here this morning and you say, I need prayer to get my focus back. Listen, I want you to touch and agree with me. I said, I want you to touch and agree with me that we're going to get it back, that you're going to be restored. Listen, and it may not even happen overnight, but a little bit is better than than, than a lot of unfocus. A little bit of focus is better than a lot of distraction. We're going to be praying, saints, for the people of God to receive focus back. Listen, so much is going on in our town. So much is going on even in our nation. Hallelujah. So much is going on in in the city of Martinsville. Hallelujah. Spirit of dissension and anger. Hallelujah. And violence. Hallelujah. It's here. We're going to be praying for all of those families that even were affected by the loss of loved ones. In the recent events, amen, in the shootings and murders, things of that nature, amen, we're praying. But in the middle of praying, saints, I hate to say it and sound this way, hear my heart. In the middle of praying, we got to keep our focus. Come on. In the middle of all that's going on, we got to keep our focus on God. Keep our focus on God. It's all right to mourn a while. It's all right to be down a while. But we've got to focus. I said, we've got to get our focus back. These things arise that they may take our focus. These things arise that they may shift us and rip us from what God is trying to do. But saints, I want you to get your focus back this February. We bless you. We give God praise for you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. God bless you.